Ledger used to be regarded as one of the top crypto hardware wallet manufacturers. With over 6 million customers, the France-based company has built a reputation as one of the most trusted crypto wallets in the world. That was until they announced their new feature, Ledger Recover. In this video, we will be taking a look at what Ledger Recover is, as well as the risks associated with continuing to use Ledger to store your digital assets. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video, I'll share with you the wallet that I'm using now, along with some other affordable and secure Ledger alternatives. So first, what is Ledger Recover? Recover. Ledger Recover is an ID-based key recovery service that provides a backup for your wallet's secret recovery phrase. The point of the service is to allow you to restore your private keys if you happen to lose or damage your secret recovery phrase. So this is how Ledger Recover really works step by step. First, your recovery phrase is duplicated, then it's encrypted, then linked to your identity before being split into three separate fragments, and then those three fragments are sent to three separate companies, CoinCover, Ledger, as well as Escrow Tech. Then with the tap of a button on your Ledger device, you can use your identity to request and recover your secret recovery phrase if you happen to lose it. Now, to be fair, one common misconception that I have been hearing about Ledger Recover is that you have to go through the KYC, know your customer process, to subscribe to this service. That is not true. Technically, it's just an identity verification. So how is it different? Well, identity verification is just that. It requires a government-issued ID, of course it has to be valid, versus KYC, which might request other personal information, such as your income, citizenship, and a bunch of other things. For now, Ledger Recover has actually been put on hold until Ledger can make the code open source. That way, users can actually access and verify the code themselves. But that doesn't mean that there aren't still some risks associated with using Ledger hardware wallets. So what are these risks that I'm talking about? Well, risk number one is that Ledger lied, or at least they're just terrible communicators. And here's what I mean. A tweet from Ledger's official account stated, and I quote, your private keys never leave the secure element chip, which has never been hacked. A firmware update cannot extract the private keys from the secure element. And now Ledger has said, and I quote, Ledger's operating system allows access to the private key stored within the secure element, but only after you manually approve and confirm it. So although apparently the user has to approve it before they can have access to your private keys on your wallet, they still are using the secure element the operating system that's found in the secure element to access your private keys to send them to these third parties. So that is either just really bad communication or a straight up lie, you decide. Nonetheless, it makes me wonder what else is Ledger not being transparent about? Risk number two actually found on the FAQ section of Ledger Recover and the question is, what happens if someone gains access to my funds using Ledger Recover? And this is their answer. If someone gets access to your wallet using Ledger Recover, subject to investigation, $50,000 compensation may be available from CoinCover in the unlikely event that something were to go wrong. That doesn't make me feel so confident personally if someone were to gain access I may be compensated for $50,000 worth. Well, what if I have $100,000 worth of assets in my wallet? The 50,000 doesn't really make up for it. Risk number three is the fact that Ledger thought it was an okay to implement a firmware update that would allow them to extract users' private keys. This is a huge red flag. From the moment we get into crypto, the first thing you research when you start looking into crypto is never share your wallet secret phrase, your private key. This is the literal key to your wallet. And now Ledger is basically saying, don't worry about that, we got you covered. I think Ledger's intentions were good and I think they were confident with the announcement. However, it just completely backfired. And to be clear, any wallet manufacturer could technically implement this update into their firmware. However, they don't because they understand the consumer does not want that. Or I should say the majority of consumers don't want that. There might be a small percentage of people who would like this recovery option, but definitely a large portion of the crypto market does not want someone else to have access of their private keys. Risk number four, Ledger's firmware still remains closed source. So until it's open, we are still left in the dark. So one question that I had, and I'm sure a lot of other people had, is why didn't Ledger just create a new wallet that offered this feature as opposed to putting it into the firmware update? Well, Ledger answered that also on their FAQ section, and here is what they said. Reason number one, there is no difference in having this code in the operating system or not. 
it is the user's choice to activate this feature. Reason number two, there is no increased threat with the implementation of this firmware. Reason number three, running two operating systems would be costly. Ledger wants to use those funds instead to increase security and usability in their products for their current and future customers. Reason number four, Ledger's commitment to open source, which they have never been committed to open source as far as I'm concerned. A lot of people have requested it and they have always kept it closed source. That was until this announcement backfired on them and now it seems that they have no other choice. So what if you have a Ledger wallet and you don't opt into this Ledger Recover feature? No private information is collected and Ledger nor anyone else can access your private key or so they say. Ledger Recover is and always will be optional. And if you're someone who would like to actually opt into this feature, you'll end up paying roughly $10 per month for this subscription service. So. Should you still use Ledger? I would say if you want a third party to manage and store your keys on your behalf because maybe you don't trust keeping them yourself or you just don't mind someone else having the access to your private keys, then go ahead and continue using Ledger. If you don't wanna use a wallet whose manufacturer thinks it's a good idea to share your private key, I would discontinue using Ledger and find another hardware wallet that maybe has some open source firmware and will not share your private key. So what should you do if you're currently using a Ledger wallet that has funds on it and you wanna get them out? Next step would be to get a cold wallet like the one I'm about to mention, set up a new seed phrase, a new secret recovery phrase, and then transfer your funds to that wallet out of your Ledger device. Now, I wanna make one thing clear though. There is no hardware wallet on the market that you're gonna find that will magically keep your funds 100% safe. Yes, some wallets are more secure than others. However, it's also our responsibility as users to know how to use a hardware wallet properly and not get scammed and not allow people to gain access to our wallets. The reason I'm mentioning this is because I've seen a lot of people say that Ledger isn't secure simply because they have had their funds transferred out of their wallet without any proof to back their claims. Such cases are more than likely user error and people are clicking on phishing links and not realizing it and thus getting their wallets drained. That said, are you sticking with Ledger or are you looking for a different wallet? Let me know in the comments and tell me which wallet you're considering moving to. And now here are some Ledger wallet alternatives that I personally recommend and have used myself. Before this whole Ledger ordeal even happened, I actually switched to a Keystone Pro hardware wallet. And this is by far my new favorite cold storage wallet. It is 100% air gapped and the firmware is open source. It also uses checksum to verify the authenticity of the firmware that you're installing on the device. The Keystone Pro also has a massive four inch touchscreen. Actually, I've got it right here. That's Keystone Pro. This is the Ledger Nano X in comparison. You can see the Pro is a lot larger and it also supports Solana. You can check out my honest review of the Keystone Pro right here. I'll also leave that link in the description for you. And if you're looking for even more Ledger alternatives, make sure to watch my hands-on review of the top five best cold wallets on the market right here, and I'll see you next time.